Welcome everyone to lesson five <clears throat> of topic 7.13. So today we're going to be looking at the highlighted bit just down there. So adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So first of all, we'll be looking at defining these and then we'll be looking at adding them when they're like and when they're unlike. So pause the video now and give yourself seven minutes working through the retrieval task. There you go. So mark these now and remember to make yourself a note of how many you scored out of six. So just to have a quick look through some of them. So we'll look at B. So write down three numbers that round to 90 from the nearest 10. So if they're rounding from the nearest 10, then when we would be looking to round, we'll take this 85, we'll be looking in the tens column. We draw our line after it and we'd be analysing the number to the right of it. So we'd be analysing the units column. So our units column would have to be, if the number in the tens column is 8, would have to be 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9 to round us up to the magic 90 that we're after. Same if we were above 90, so 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. We're looking at the units column and it'd have to be below 5 for us to round down to 90. For this one here, D, where we fill in the blanks, we're trying to say how many halves represent zero. So that'd be zero over two. How many halves represent one? Well, two. How many halves represent two whole ones? So that'd be four. And as you can see, it's going up every time. So how many halves give us the whole number five? That'd be 10. So for this one here, <clears throat> It's quite interesting linking to what we're doing today. We have different denominators. We have the same numerator. So which one's going to be bigger? Well, it's going to be the one where the denominator is smallest because the denominator breaks and divides into our top number. And then working out the area of the following triangle is going to be a half the base, which is three times by the height, which is always the perpendicular height. Not this, not this side here. The height so three times five gives us gives us fifteen divided by two gives us seven point five. We could have and should have here as well our units so it'd be centimeters squared. Great work if you spotted that. So here we are. So first of all, we're going to start off with some easy ones. So we've got coefficients now. So the coefficient is the number that comes before our variable. And it tells you how many of the variable we have. So it just comes down to just like we were doing the other day. Our variables are the same. They're both x's. So just like if we said, because they're both x's, just like the other day, if it was both a c for cars, we could just add them together. So all we've got to do is we've just got to add our coefficients together. So it just becomes 4 over 10, add 3 over 10. Now our denominators are both the same, just like it says in our success criteria. So all we have to do is add our numerators, which is what it says here. So we get 7 over 10, and that is lots of x. So we've got 7 tenths, lots of x. So pause the video now and give yourselves 30 seconds to try and solve the first we do. Okay, so again, the denominators are the same. The variables are both the same. So we just have to add the numerators. So 4 plus 3 gives us 7. The denominator stays the same, as it says in the success criteria. And that gives us our answer. Give yourselves the mark if you got that right. <coughs> So again, our variables are the same, our denominators are the same, so we just need to, this time, if we have a look, we just need to subtract the numerators. So 4 take away 3 gives us 1, and that's all over 10. So now pause the video and give yourselves 30 seconds to try and solve the we do. Remember you can use the success criteria, it's what it's there for. 
Okay, so again, denominators are the same. We're talking about the same lots of x, same variable. So therefore, we can just subtract the numerator. So we get 1 over 11, lots of x. Give yourselves the mark if you got that right. Okay, so now we have more than two terms. We've got three terms. They're all talking about x, and they all have the same denominator. So we can say that, first of all, we're going to do 4 take away the 3. So that will give us 1 over 10, lots of x. And then we've also got plus 1 over 10, x. So you can break it down. So I've done these two bits here first, and now I'm going to do the last bit. So again, still the same variable, still the same denominator, so I just need to add the numerators. So it would be 2 over 10 to the x. And you can also notice that that could become, so we could divide the top and the bottom to simplify it further by 2. So if we divide the top and the bottom by 2, we get an equivalent fraction of 1 over 5, and the x stays the same. So I'll just block that off. So if you can pause the video now and give this we do a go for me, give yourselves 30 seconds. Okay, so here we go. So again, x, 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 denominator 11, 11, 11. <clears throat> so we just apply the operations to the numerators. So 4 take away 3 gives me 1. 1 plus 1 gives me 2, so I get 2 over 11 times by x. Give yourselves the mark if you got that right. So again, now we've got some more subtractions instead of some additions as well. So again, all x's, again, all denominators of 10. So we just apply the operations to the numerator, the top numbers. So 4 take 3 gives us 1. 1, subtract 1, gives us 0 over 10 times by x. And so our answer is just 0, because 0 divided by 10 is 0. 0 times x gives us 0. So pause the video now and give yourselves 30 seconds. Try and solve this uh, uh, we do. Okay, so again, all the x's are the same. The denominators are the same. So all we have to do is apply the operations to the numerators. So 4 take away 3 gives me 1 over 11x. And 1 over 11x minus 1 over 11x is going to give us 0 over 11x, which again is just going to give us an answer of 0. So give yourselves a mark if you got that right. We've got one more problem to try now. And then you will be doing your practice examples to see whether we see whether we understood this. So again, the variables are all the same and the denominators are all the same. So we have to just apply the operation to the numerators. So 4 plus 3 gives me 7. 7 plus 3 gives me 10. So we've got 10 over 10 to the x. And just like from our retrieval task, Remember when we were trying to figure out how these fractions link to whole numbers? 10 lots of 10 gives me 1 lot of x. And 1 times by x just gives me x. So there's your answer. So now can you pause the video and give yourselves 30 seconds trying to work through this fifth we do. Okay, so again, denominators are all the same, the variables are all the same, so we're going to get 11 on the bottom, and it's going to be multiplied by x, and we just have to apply the operation to the numerator, so 4 plus 3 gives me 7, 7 plus 4 gives me 11, so I just get x again. So 
So give yourselves a mark if you got that right. Moving on. So now, guys, I'm going to give you four minutes. If you can pause the video, use the success criteria, and work through these problems. And here are the answers. Give yourselves a mark out of eight. It'll be useful information when you scroll back through and have a look back through your notes at the end of the lesson. Then you can see and highlight, did you struggle in the topic before this or the work before this? If you've got a high score, I'd hesitate to say you didn't. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at algebraic fractions with different denominators. So we've got a fair few practice examples to work through here. Then we can set you off practicing them yourselves. So just like if we were adding fractions last time, we had the same denominator. This time we have the same variable, that works, but we have different denominators. So if we have a look at our success criteria, use multiplication to make the fractions have the same denominator. Okay, so I can see that in my five times tables and in my seven times tables, they both share a multiple of 35. So that's by times in five by seven and seven by five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna times this first fraction here, top and bottom, by 7. So on the top I'm going to get 14 and on the bottom I'm going to get 35. And then over here I'm going to times this fraction by 5, top and bottom. So on the top I'm going to get 15 and on the bottom I'm going to get 35. So now it's just like the problems that we just did a few minutes earlier. So our denominators are the same, variables are the same, so we just need to add the top number. So 14 add 15 gives me 29 over 35x. I can't straight away see a way to simplify that. So that will stay as it is. Can you pause the video now and give yourselves 30 seconds trying to solve this first redo? Okay, so again, can't see a common denominator. Uh, they don't have a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get both denominators to 70 because I know that's in the 10 times tables and the 7 times tables. If it helps, you can write a list out of the 10 and the 7 times tables or get your journals out that have your times tables in them. Okay, so this fraction here of times by 7 top and bottom. So I get 14 on the top. And then this fraction here, I've had to times by 10, top and bottom. So I'm going to get 30 on the top. So now my fractions are both, my denominators are both the same. So all I have to do is add the top numbers, and I get 44 over 70, lots of x. Because remember, once we're adding these fractions, our fractions represent the, the how, many, how much of x we have. So give yourselves the mark if you got that right. So next of all, again, I'm going to want a denominator of 35 because we have 7 and 5 on the bottom again. So the way that I get that is I'm going to have to times my fraction top and bottom here by 5. So I'm going to get 15 over 35, lots of x. And that's, being, that's then having subtracted from it this fraction, which I've times top and bottom by 7 to get an equivalent fraction. So now we've got 15 over 35, lots of x. Take away 17. Oh wait, two times seven, no, that gives 14. So we'll get rid of that there. So we times the two in the numerator by seven to get 14, times the five in the denominator by seven, we get 35. So we do 15 lots of 35, 15 over 35 lots of x, subtract 14 over 35 lots of x. So our denominators are the same, our variables 
are the same. So they're just like the problems that we started the lesson with. So we do 15 take away 13, 14, sorry. So we get 1 over 35, lots of x. And there is your answer. So try and do that a little bit more coherently and smoothly than I did. Pause the video and give yourselves 30 seconds to work through this second we do. Okay, so again, I can see that my denominator, I'm going to want the same common denominator. So I'm going to go with 70 as that denominator. So both fractions are, be, the fractions are being subtracted. So this side, I have to times top and bottom by 10 to get a denominator of 70. So I get 30. And then this fraction, I'm going to need to multiply top and bottom by 7. So this time we've got 30 over 70 lots of x, subtract 14 over 70 lots of x. So the denominators are the same. Now all we have to do is subtract the numerators. So we do 30 take away 14. That gives us 16 over 70 lots of x. Now I can see straight away that both of those numbers there are divisible by 2. So let's divide the top and bottom by 2. So we'd get 8 over 35, lots of x. And that's it in its simplest form. Give yourselves the mark if you got that correct. Okay, so here we go. So we've got a subtraction. And we can look at this and say that we need a common denominator. And 20 is a nice one. But if you're struggling to find a common denominator, what you can always do is you can always times the other fraction by the denominator from the fraction that you want to match. So we could say, okay, so r 3 over 4, I'm going to times that top and bottom by 5. And I can also say my 2 fifths, I'm going to times that top and bottom by 4. Because that way, as you can see, we still end up with 4 times 5 and 5 times 4 as our denominator. So it's still going to get us a common denominator. So if you're ever struggling to find a shared denominator, just times the other fraction by the fraction's denominator that you want to match it with. So that's what I'll do here. So uh, my 3 over 4 all times by 5, on the top is going to give me 15, and on the bottom it's going to give me 20, and that's lots of x. My 2 fifths is going to be on the top times by 4, as we can see over here, so that's going to give me 8, and on the bottom, 5 times 4, that's going to give me 20. So as you can see, it's got as a common denominator. All we have to do now is subtract the numerators, so 15 take away 8 gives me 7. So 7 over 20, lots of x. Again, that is simplified. 7 does not go into 20. So there we go. Pause the video now. And give yourselves 30 seconds trying to solve this we do. So again, this time, I'm just going to times the two numerators, which gives me 28, and I'm going to decide that that is going to be my denominator. So to get 28 from my 3 over 4, I've had to times top and bottom by 7, so 3 times 7 gives me 21. The fractions are being subtracted. For my second fraction, the 2 over 7, I've had to times that top and bottom by 4, so on the top I'm going to get 8. So now my denominator is the same. My variables are the same, just take away the numerator. So 21 take away 8 gives us 13 over 28, lots of x. So there you go. Give yourselves the mark if you got that right. Next of all, this is where we can work smarter. So again, we don't have the same denominator, but we do have the same variable. So we could do what we did on the last one and do 4 times by 20 and have our denominator as 80. That would work. 
but we don't need to do that. We can make our work a little bit easier. If we just times this fraction, top and bottom by five, then we'll notice that we will get a denominator of 20. So four times five gives us the 20. The second fraction can stay as it is. So we found the equivalent fraction here that gets us to our shared denominator, saves us some work. So now we've got the same denominator, same variable. We can just subtract. We can just subtract the numerators, which gives us 12 over 20. Again, you can notice that 4 goes into both of those. So we can divide top and bottom by 4. And we get 3 on the top, 5 on the bottom, lots of x. So this is really showcasing our skills when it comes to finding equivalent fractions, simplifying fractions. We've just got the variable involved as well. We've just got the x involved as well. So pause the video now. So pause the video now and give yourselves how long? 30 seconds working through this fourth example here. Okay, so again, I can notice that our denominators are different. So my 3 over 10, I'm going to want to times top and bottom by 2, and I'm going to get 6 over 20, lots of x. And then I already have my other fraction as being over 20. So now I just need to take away the numerators, so I just get 3 over 20, lots of x. Give yourselves the mark if you got that right. Well done if you did. Taking a step up, we're moving to when we have three terms. So, again, I'm going to look at this and think, what do I want all these to meet at? All these denominators, what do I want them all to meet at? So, I'm going to say 40. So, I know that 40 is in all of these denominators. The first one that came to my mind, I won't lie to you, was 80. So, that would work just fine as well. So I want them all to go to 40, so what do I have to times my first fraction by top and bottom to get to 30? 40? I have to times it by 10. So in my numerator I get 30. My next fraction I have to times in top and bottom by 5, so I'd get 10 over 40, lots of x. And then in my final fraction, which I'm subtracting, make sure you pay close attention to the operations linking them. To get 40 in my denominator for this one, I'm going to have to times top and bottom by 4, so I'm going to get 12 over x. So now, denominator is all the same, variables all the same, apply the operations to the numerator. So 30 add 10 gives us 40. 40 take away 12 gives us 28 over 40, lots of x. So again, that can be simplified further. But seeing as it doesn't tell me to fully simplify in the question, I'm going to leave it here so that you guys can focus on the first steps. Just for this, just for this moment. So can you pause the video now and give yourselves 30 seconds trying to solve through this we do? I think we're on the fifth. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to have a common denominator of 40. So my first fraction, I've had to times top and bottom by 10. Second fraction, I've had to times top and bottom by 5. And then the subtract at the end, I've had to times top and bottom by 4. So I'm going to get 12 on the top, aren't I? I'm going to get 10 on the bottom. I'm going to get 40 on the bottom, sorry. And then it's equal to, again, first nu numerators. 30 added to 5 gives us 35. 35 take away 12. 35 take away 12 
is going to leave us with 5 take 2, we get 3, 3 take 1, we get 2. So it leaves us with 23 over 40, lots of X. So really well done if you got that right, guys. And here is our final problem before I let you loose on some practice examples. So now we have to remember that when we say we have x, what we're saying is that we have one lot of x. The one is sort of implied. We don't need to actually write it. <clears throat> so, again, I still want a common den denominator. So, when we look at our retrieval task, we had a problem where we were trying to write whole numbers as fractions of a certain denominator. So how many temps, how many temps give us one whole one? Well, it's 10 temps. Just like two whole ones would be represented by 20 temps. And three whole ones will be represented by 30 temps. So now that we've got it as a fraction with 10 as the denominator, it's easy for us from this point. We've done it numerous times today. So numerator of 10 subtracted by the numerator of 3 gives us 7 over 10, lots of x. I know what you're thinking. It's so much easier than the last one. So now pause the video and give yourselves a moment. Give yourselves 30 seconds to work through this sixth we do. Okay, so again, our one lot of x represents 11 elevenths of x, subtracts 3 over 11 x. Here we go, denominators are the same, variables are the same. So now we just have to apply the operation to the numerator. So 11 take 3 gives us 8 over 11 x. And brilliant work. So now remember guys as we move on to the practice examples to use your success criteria. Use the examples that you've done in your book or in your notes to support you and to help you solidify this, this skill. So here we go. Give yourselves five minutes working through this guys. Pause the video. And here we go. Here is some more questions. So give yourselves another three minutes now working through these. And here are the answers to both sections. As you can see, they've gave, given you the answers in two formats. So 44 over 45 x when we're times in by a fraction a fraction by a whole number we times by the denominator we times by the numerator and divide by the denominator so you can put the x value in the numerator in uh, question number two they've also simplified as well so as you can see from c they've noticed that 9 and 18 are both the can take out a factor of 9 so if we divide the top by 9 we get 1 we divide the bottom by 9 we get 2 so really well done if you simplified fully as well great work today guys make sure you send all your work over to your teacher however they like it if you're really proud of your work as well make sure you send a picture of your work through to your teacher i'm sure they'd love to see it all right have a nice day guys take care and i'll speak to you next time